My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. A little business to take care of today, but Jim, what you got going on? World's first Blacklight comic, Octobriana 1976. In stores now, in your local comic shop. If it's not there, have them order it for you. Uh, printed with fluorescent ink, glows under blacklight, looks like no other comic before it, uh, no other comic since. It is very one of a kind, so you want to add it to your collection, and it's selling well. So thank you to everybody that's bought it so far, and if you want one, I would recommend picking it up sooner rather than later. That's a money shot right there. Yes, it is. Uh, and if you're curious about making comics, Kickstarter, all of this, I made a process zine, 350 pages. It's a digital zine. You can pick up at jimrug.com, my website, and it goes through everything, including high-res scans of uh, the original art and all the drafts that went into this. So process zine available at jimrug.com. Octobriana available at comic shops everywhere. Big day today, Jim, at uh, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at Sotheby's Auction House. Uh, the hammers are going to start swinging for the very first hip-hop-related auction that a big auction house has ever done. Uh, when they were put, curating it, putting it together, they asked if they could, um, if I could consign some hip-hop family tree artwork to be a part of that, and I, I said yes. So uh, they were curious, like, you know, what do you have? Can we see what this stuff looks like? And thankfully, I had the Ed Piscor Studio, Studio Edition uh, PDF on hand to send them so that they could make their choice. So I described this as the buy me now option to the auction that's going to be going down, you know, 6 p.m. today. And I figured we didn't make a video about the Studio Edition. Let's go through it a little bit and, uh, you know, just point out some of the pages gotta point this stuff out one of my favorite features in artist editions is this kind of like blow up close up detail on these giant canvas pages and that's an amazing start looks great at that size cover the first one little commentary track on each on each piece was like my sort of addition to the artist edition kind of pantheon scott dumbier Add this to all of them. This is some of my favorite stuff. You know, it seems like it's been a theme as, as we've recorded lately is, man, finding this stuff where it's the artist's words talking about their work, it's the best thing in the world, especially if you're a fan of the artist. And if you're buying an artist edition, you probably are. It's great to get that insight. I love that piece. And I, I hope it becomes a staple of future artist editions. We were looking at some other comics recently that had some commentary type pieces, man. And, and I, think it's, I think it's a cool thing to add. You could still keep the mystery of what you're implying with story things and still have some commentary bits to to what you're doing but you know this covers the gamut man some some process things to go along with uh you know the, the final pages those are always great details layouts i mean heck we've done episodes on layouts like it's nice to see that stuff fab five freddy has some pieces at, at the uh the auction today gotta love a warhol reference right in the graffiti yeah that's fab that's fab's big early contribution to hip-hop culture I love all the great lettering too, like the title lettering, the big sound effects, all of that stuff I think looks really good in here. It's real fun like to see the foreign editions when these, like, you know, the Polish publishing company has to, has to do their version of, uh, of, of some of that. Here's that title page illustration that I pointed out in the beginning to give you some sense of the actual size versus that giant reproduction. I used real Leroy lettering on a piece of scrap paper for for the dialogue, but like the space is impossible to pick up. Like the person who lettered EC Comics totally like got into a groove and f had a system. You know, I fool around with that kind of stuff, and it's it is impossible. Like I look at that and I think somebody did like several of these books a month. Right? How is that possible? Yeah. Haven't yet come to any of the pages from from the auction but there's going to be a link below this video that has all the uh the lots that are available whenever i do sell a page which which is very rare like i kind of like to keep a chain of custody on the supply and deal with like a very small amount of people it's just supply and demand it's kind of the game we have to play I like to keep a real tight leash on the pages going out there love seeing all the different textures you know, like some some of the, like the drop ceiling, the ceiling tile, speckles, the brick walls in the background really adds a lot. You know, you can even find like screen tones, uh, probably the wrong word for them, but that have those kinds of patterns, like the brick patterns and stuff. This is a page that's going to be in, in the auction. Um, the Basquiat Ram LZ pages were always highly sought after. And I, and I did sell a few of those early on. Um, 
when I started getting asked a lot about the Basquiat pages, I was like, man, I think I'm gonna hold on to these. So something tells me that uh, that that th these are these are wanted pages. So that's when the and I told the the auction house, you know, like just in conversation, like they were curious about like, you know, what people are looking at, what what they're interested in, and the Basquiat stuff is they're pages that I'm asked about fairly frequently. One of the smaller details in artist editions, of course, people that are familiar with them are getting to see sort of the drawings, the marks, the extra stuff. And it's something that I enjoy going through these pages is seeing the blue lines, whether yeah. it's for perspective uh, or lettering, which is awesome. But all the perspective and anytime there's mechanical stuff, you know, like a mixing board or something, I'm noticing some of the blue lines and how it's set up for either perspective or parallels with controls and things. Very, uh, very fun to see that part. One of the nice details of an artist edition and what you want an artist edition. Totally. Totally, like, and, and you know, it's it's production art, and, and my favorite stuff when I look at paintings or anything is to see, is to see some brush strokes and stuff. So like, my fill-in ink is shit ink <laughs> that is archival buyers out there, but you see the brush strokes because when I scan it in and do what I need to, it'll show up black. This is another thing that you see in artist editions because some guys are self-conscious and I think they blow out their levels a little bit they to do. make their blacks look a little better because I've seen originals and then the artist edition of those originals and it's like they did some adjustment <laughs> or they have a bad scanner. Um, either way, like that, it is nice to have that quality and, and you can see a little bit, I think it's showing up in the video, uh, but that is, like you say, Ed, I look for the same thing because there are artist editions where it looks like a black and white photocopy and hats off to the super clean anchor that put that together but not that interesting. Right. As um, as I was putting this book out, uh, you know, as I was putting Hip Hop Family Tree out and serializing the strips on Boing Boing every every Tuesday, started to get more popular. And then that's when your conspiracy theory people started uh, getting in touch. And there's a lot of conspiracy about Illuminati, hip hop, stuff like that. So like, I wanted this composition to feel like one of those, uh, those compasses, <laughs> you know? Because my, like they sort of, playing with my emotions a little bit and I remember thinking like when I when I chose this composition if it's it turns up and and they start talking about this being like a piece of Illuminati thing then I know there is no Illuminati because you know I haven't been in inducted unless I have <laughs> <laughs> no one at home knows <laughs> you know this cover is going to be in the auction this LL Cool J piece is going to be uh it, in the auction there another like sort of highly asked for um piece because it's kind of like an homage to the mama mama said knock you out video like at the end with the grandma is like shouting at him when, when he's down there it's a great composition you know it looks really good as a piece this piece right here um was first the free comic book day comic uh this is hands down the piece that i'm asked about uh the second most we'll say the, the cover to hip hop family tree volume one is the one that I'm asked about a lot. You know, it's, it's two pieces of paper taped on the back and the way they present the material on the website, they show you the back and they show you yeah. everything. So, so that everything is very clear, but you know, 50, 60 different characters on the page, all represented in, in a kind of 11 rockets, 50 configuration. It is great to see the real screen screen tone zip a tone on it. Uh, and it does show up really well in this artist edition. You can see where it overlaps, like the inked areas, the, the different ink color with the zip tone or screen tone on top of it versus without it. Um, that's the stuff I love. That's that's what I want in an artist edition is seeing those kind of details. It's a really nice rough. Yeah, thanks, man. Just trying to figure stuff out. And it's not just on copy paper. Like, I always make a template uh, to just... Sure. Let, let myself know what kind of room I have to work with. Is that actual size, the rough the, yeah. the print size? Yeah, if, the, if this is 8.5 by 11 paper, it is. That's what I do uh, a lot whenever I'm doing like a cover or something. I'll do my roughs at print size to really get a feel of... You know, oh, yeah, this this right here is print size. Yeah. yeah. I think people underestimate the value of that. You know, actually looking at... Holding it up at the size it's going to be printed. That's a great man. That's a good. <laughs> Both of these pages are, oh, yeah, are yeah. going to be part of the uh, the auction here, man. We got the Fat Boys as planetary bodies, and the Park DJ underneath the uh, underneath the street light, man. Classic composition. Love the dry brush edges. 
Yeah, another piece. Like, I think both of these, like, I had an art show in Helsinki, Finland, and, you know, wanted, wanted to make it feel a little bit more finished. So I did the dry brush thing to, just so that it looks good on a wall. It looks good on a page. And the, uh, the uh, studio edition, you know, has a lot of ancillary stuff that went into producing the book. But I also have some X-Men pages in there. Each tier took one day for me to complete. And my thing was like, I'm just going to do a piece of X-Men fan art because I never in my adult life drew, drew X-Men shit. And I loved X-Men. And I was like, this is turning out. I'll color it. And as I was coloring it, I was like, these colors, I mean, these characters are not who they are until you color them. You know, like... This is not Wolverine until you get the brown and orange on there. And then it just feels like Wolverine. So finished it, was very happy with it. You could see that uh, some of the faces were drawn digitally because when I started to get down here, my hand hurt. <laughs> That's when I put that tweet out and was just like, Marvel, you should just let me make some X-Men comics. Like, let just let me make any kind of X-Men comic I feel like making. That cannonball's really good. Yeah, thanks, man. Um, boom. Couple covers, some interior pages. And there's about a dozen. This is the other thing that I always love is seeing the, uh, the 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 pen nib marks on the side. Sometimes, like a color, if a guy does color, you'll see that, or a wash, you'll see like the little bits of wash where they're testing it out. You know, like it's such a cool piece for, uh, as you say, production art. And it just saves three seconds per one of those, like. But you add it up, and now I saved a minute. And I'm spending every second of my day on this. I'm writing, drawing, lettering, and coloring. Let me get an extra minute sleep. Another big piece that's going to be in the auction is the character design, uh, figure design for my public enemy action figures. So all of this stuff, this is not going to be a part of this. Is This is a digital mock-up. Uh, but all of this stuff is going to be sold as, as one unit. And should say, this is actual graph paper. It is. Like, this is not a, a digital effect that you might right. see in some comics, but uh, actually drawn on that paper. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so there will be a set of figures, about 20 different pieces of paper that went into the designs of the characters. And that's going to be a unit uh, that will be uh, on auction at Sotheby's as well. So that's going down in just a couple of hours, Jimmy. It certainly suggest a... Everybody go check that out, man. The links are going to be in the description below for each of the individual lots. Probably no link for the live version because I'm not going to be around to link that stuff. I'm going far away from the computer, man. Uh, but that's it. Well, not totally it. Because everybody watching this, you can have this book. Right. This can oh, be yeah. yours. You can be looking at this book uh, right now from the comfort. Following along with this video, uh, <laughs> you know, as you look through your own copy of... Uh, the studio edition yes this is the buy me now option uh if you can't get your hands on a piece of uh art that is being auctioned today for a fraction of the price or even if you do win one of those auctions you can still have the catalog for all of it jim i like the way you think and uh we should note you know this is one of those books that when they're gone they're gone yeah you, you don't reprint books of this size um you know so if you want this I know there are artist editions that I waited too long to pull the trigger on, and now I don't get them. So if you're interested in this, if you like what you see, now is the time to do it. Since since the, Th the Sotheby's stuff uh, was, was announced, this book has been selling uh, a lot more ostensibly from potential buyers who want to get a little bit of a closer look uh, at, at, at the artwork. Uh, it has been reported to me that these are flying, so you know, won't be a bad thing to get rid of m more copies of that. Use a soft bees as my commercial to sell, sell the, uh, the studio <laughs> edition. Anyhow, kayfabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are available. Uh, Octobriana's in, in stores right now. That book is selling like hotcakes, and that's going to be, uh, you know, sold out within a month K at the latest. Kayfabe effect, people. Make it happen. <laughs> Patreon.com slash Ed Piscor. You could read uh, the Red Room strips as I serialize them. Three bucks get you the archive. New strips every Tuesday. Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter to keep up with everything we're doing. 
Pick up Cartoonist Kayfabe merchandise and t-shirts so you can look your best. Links below this video. Jimmy, I'm going on a bike ride, man. I'm getting away from this damn computer and I'm not even going to look at that auction thing for one second while it's going on. Friends, text me if things are good. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't if it's bad. Give them the marching orders, Jimmy. Read more comics.